let me just go back on a point that uh, Dan made earlier, uh, which is the, the advent of the cloud. Now, uh, at the moment, we're designing all this software and we're hopefully designing security in uh, with the idea that there's clients that sit on people's uh, machines. But of course, when we go to thin client technology and uh, everything then sitting in the, in the cloud somewhere, which seems to be the way things are going, that changes that changes the field of security somewhat, doesn't it? How are we going to deal with that? Bearing in mind we're not answering the problems now, how, how are the issues going to change when we migrate? Okay, well, the first thing to say about the cloud is, um, you know, and security people are very good at saying no, um, <laughs> but the cloud is a very good business model. Yes. So the um, what the security people have got to do is work out how they can live with the cloud, mm. um, because the business is, yeah, the business want it. It's, it's yeah. a very cheap model. Um, Lots of good business reasons why why people want to do go to the cloud. So it's, it's really a question of um, don't you know the answer is not we're not going to use the cloud because you know it's a bit like um, uh, wireless technology. Um, you know the security people when wireless networks came out said oh no they're very dangerous you can't use them you can't secure them. Now of course they found ways to secure them. Same things with smartphones. Mm. That's going to apply to the cloud. So it's no good just saying big security problems you can't use it. What we've got to do is find out ways of using it. And that, that I think, is going to be one of the next big challenges for the security profession. I think you're right. And the the, the saying no traditionally from IT security doesn't wash anymore. No. Um, and people, even if you do say no and implement no, people are incredibly creative and will go and do it anyway mm -hmm. and find a different route around, won't they? Mm -hmm. So it's about a balance of you know, saying yes, but with sensible controls in place mm -hmm. in the cloud to mitigate, if you like, that risk. So you don't get the risks of not doing it, get the benefits of the cloud, but also mitigate the risks by being sensible about it as mm. well, and not, not banning everything. Mm. Notice we've been saying the word risk a lot. Yes. If you look at this from a business perspective, this is all about risk management. Mm. So you might have these two types of development going on, one which has got the errors, got the, but it's a low risk application uh, versus the effort on the high risk application where they are putting the effort in security. So what the business is doing is looking at risk management of their applications and saying, we can live with this, we will take that risk uh, on this space, but not in that space. Uh, I think the challenge is to differentiate between the two and apply the appropriate measures to the areas depending on their level of risk. I, I, I think Anthony makes a very good point there. Um, and again, as I said, you know, the two financial institutes I, I worked in, were, I mean, one of the things we realized was you can't check every single application. So what you have to do is you have to do some sort of triage which says, what's the level of risk of this application? We'll really concentrate on the high risk ones and you know, the lower risk ones will just uh, assume some sort of baseline of security is being built into them. And I've got another question then about um, the culture aspect actually, because a, a lot of the things we've discussed are down to just the approach we took perhaps 20 years ago still being used that don't really apply anymore. And I'm wondering whether um, the kind of software that we design in the first place has got a, a kind of a flaw in it in that we all know, don't we, of examples of software releases that give functionality that basically no one's really going to be using. Bloatware, I suppose we could use, we could say, could we, as, as a shorthand. Um, tremendously complicated things where if you analyze what users use on it, it's about 10%. Now, the more complicated something gets, the easier it is to break it, isn't it? So is there, is there a kind of philosophical problem there? I think it would be very hard for an organization to release a piece of software that did less than its previous version. Although I think it might, in retrospect, be a really good idea if we did. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I think the other thing is... is it's like it, the mindset is that it's just got to, we've got to do more and more and more mm -hmm. with this. Yeah. But I think um, that's within a piece of software. Mm. Or you could look at... So you could argue you could reduce, if you like, the, ta the attack service surface of it by reducing the complexity. Or you have less numbers of applications on certain systems, reducing it that way instead. So hardening application servers by removing all the unnecessary peripherals that go with it. Executables, DLLs, all the things that you know, a good application hacker will, if they do find a flaw in the application, pick up to help them. Because very often it's not just the application that's given the access, it's the things that surround it right. that give the hacker tools to then, so they may gain access, but they may not be able to go any further or may not be able to pull back data. But once they've got that access, they can pick up other pieces of the jigsaw around on the system to help them do their job. So you could argue in both ways, strip down systems or strip down the application. Right, or both. Or both. That'd be even more secure. 
I don't know. Maybe less usable. <laughs> Possibly, yes. <laughs> I mean, I think I agree with Anthony. I mean, there's, um, you know, if, 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 you, if you take someone like a word processor, mm. I mean, all you really wanted to do is be able to type into it a little bit of word wrap and you know, format it nicely and all the rest of it. And now, if you look at most of the major word processors, I mean, I guess most the, the general user probably uses about 10% of the fun functionality, and, and the expert maybe uses 25% you know, of the functionality, yeah. but I don't think anybody uses 100%. Trouble is, of course, different people use different 25%. Right. Um, so, so it's very difficult. But, you know, if, if and, you know, this is a call to vendors, I suppose, if vendors want to add additional functionality in the next release, why shouldn't that different additional functionality be security functionality to, to make it a more secure release? So, you know, that'd be quite a nice first, wouldn't it? You know, we've, we've released this new product, and what it really is, it's, it's concentrating on the security features. Um, in brackets that we should have perhaps built in in the first place. Yeah. So what a lot of product managers do when they're, they're basically coming up with the software they're going to release is they will do a balancing act. There'll be things that need to be fixed, things like mm -hmm. security and so on that, that might need to improve on, in places. There are new things that need to be done, new capabilities their customers are asking them for. And it's how well we get that balancing act right as to whether we're getting more secure software at the end of the day mm -hmm. or less secure. Yes. I think we're moving our discussion along to potential solutions to some of these issues, aren't we? We've mentioned a couple of them already.